Hello, everybody, and welcome to my Virginia Governor Rice prediction today. Um, this will be my final Virginia Governor Rice prediction between Glenn Youngkin and Terry McAuliffe. Um, the polls have significantly narrowed up between these two over the last month, uh, and Glenn Youngkin has taken the lead in the Brooklyn politics average for the Virginia polls. Glenn Youngkin uh, has had the lead. It is Election Day. However, Terry McAuliffe has had a significant lead, not a significant lead, but a um, a somewhat okay lead with early votes in the election. Anyway, let's get right into taking a look at some of the def- demographics of this election that I wanted to go over. First off, let's take a look at the percentage of people that are voting in the state of Virginia. 47% of the state of Virginia is male, while 53% of Virginia is female. Um, this is the demographics of Virginia compared to the United States demographics, which is 51% female to 49% Male, um, definitely, uh, as as we can tell, or as demographics show, um, on average, women do tend to vote more Democrat than men, um, more towards the Democrats than men, which does give um, <clears throat> Terry McAuliffe an advantage here in the state. One of the other statistics I wanted to show everybody was um, the percentage of the generational voting in the state of Virginia. Uh, Gen Z will actually be able to vote in this election uh, for those who were born anywhere, I guess, before 2003, as long as you're 18, um, and they will be able to vote in this general election. Um, so the greatest generation, this is a generation born between born before 1944, significantly votes Republican, 8.5% of this population of Virginia. Uh, boomers, obviously, 1945 to 1964 the plurality of the state of Virginia. As we all know, these boomers were the uh, generation that, you know, it, it was a population explosion uh, right after World War II, uh, 31%. Generation X, um, ni- 1965 to 1981, it's actually my father's generation, uh, with 28% of the voting block in Virginia, which is the second highest. And then millennials, between 1982 and 1996, we hear so much about them one of the most liberal voting blocks in the entire state of Virginia at the third highest of 25.5%, while Gen Z is the lowest at the moment, given that they have only just begun voting uh, at 7% of the population. And they are the people with the lowest amount of political efficacy, although they are very, very far to the left as a generation. um, They do not tend to come out and vote as much, especially uh, as much as generations like Generation X, the boomers are the greatest or even the millennials, which do come out to vote in bigger numbers, which is a benefit for Glenn Youngkin, who will get the majority of the greatest boomers and possibly even Gen Gen X voters. Um, But we will see where that is on election day. Uh, This is just another fact that I wanted to let you guys in on that I was examining when I looked over the uh, demographics of the state of Virginia. I frankly was interested in just looking at the composition of the state and how everything folded out. But anyway, when we look at these two candidates, and I'll go back to that, uh, Glenn Youngkin, he has significantly narrowed up the polls in Virginia, as we saw only a few days ago. The Fox News poll had Glenn Youngkin up eight points in the state of Virginia, Terry McAuliffe leading, uh, trailing, and then recent polls have shown that Terry McAuliffe is up about one point in Virginia. Terry McAuliffe has about a one-point lead in the state of Virginia. Um, Now, I would not take the Fox poll for granted. I know that a lot of Republican YouTubers, uh, and uh, not not only YouTubers, but political commentators have looked at that Fox News poll and seen that as it's a guarantee that Glenn Youngkin will become the next governor. It is not a guarantee, uh, or guarantee that a lot of Democrats think that Terry McAuliffe, it, it's going to be hard for him to win. Uh, it will be hard for him to win, but that does not mean you should count Terry McAuliffe out. He is a political fighter, and he is a pretty very good politician, as you've seen where he's gotten today. Uh, even being the former governor. So don't count any of these two candidates out. I would urge everybody of both sar- both sides to go out and vote in the general election, not the general election, but the statewide election in Virginia uh, and choose their next governor. We have seen from the Republican side them pushing the belief that children are being taught critical race theory in uh, elementary schools, which has sparked a lot of outrage among parents in Virginia to go to their school boards and speak out against this. Um, and that has been a major calling of Glenn Youngkin, as well as um, the economy and taxes, uh, which is also what he has run on. He is not the most um, conservative of Republicans. Uh, This is just not the case. Glenn Youngkin is actually a much more 
uh, moderate Republican, or even you could consider liberal Republican, as people remember at the debates, he did say that he would not vote, or he not, not, not that he would not vote, but that he would not have signed a Texas abortion law. While he does say that he is pro-life, he would not have supported the Texas abortion law that he said at the debate. Terry McAuliffe, more to the moderate left wing of the Democrat Party, in the middle, I would say, um, between those two sections, um, does have support. He has called Obama into campaign for him. Biden, Kamala Harris, Jamie Harrison, the chair of the DNC, who ran against Lindsey Graham but lost in the Carolina, North South Carolina Senate election, uh, and Stacey Abrams, who uh, was the former chair of the DNC and ran against Brian Kemp but lost the Georgia governor election. Uh, she also has uh, made many inclinations that she does plan to run for governor of Georgia uh, in 2022. But anyway, these two candidates, very, very strong for both parties, and it is going to be a very, very close race. Um, and as we have seen, and as of the videos that I have made over the previous days, uh, the polling, this is a benefit for the Republicans, the polling for Joe Biden has significantly declined. Uh, the previous poll that I made yesterday, direction of the country, DOC polls, 22% of Americans believe it is headed in the country's headed in the right direction, while over 70% of the country believe it is headed in the wrong direction. This is going to drastically decrease the th enthusiasm for Democrats and increase enthusiasm for Republicans. That does not mean that 70% of the, the country is Republican. It just means that they don't believe that things are headed in their way. Um, and as we've seen from the Joe Biden approvals, drastically decreasing in his approval. Another benefit for Glenn Youngkin, however, not a guarantee. Terry McAuliffe still has a chance. Virginia is a likely to solid deep blue uh, state. Anyway, let's get right to the prediction now that I have said all of this. Um, I, I don't think I've made any inclination as to who I will support, but we will take a look. Um, so, the belief, person who I believe will become the next governor of the state of Virginia is Terry McAuliffe. I believe Terry McAuliffe will win the state of Virginia by the smallest of margins. Final results. 50.3% to Glenn Youngkin's 49.7%. We're excluding that third-party candidate in this prediction at the moment. Terry McAuliffe will go on to serve another four-year term as governor of the state of Virginia in one of the closest statewide races we have seen in our lifetimes. This is an incredibly close statewide race, um, and it was definitely not a guarantee for the Democrats. They barely cling on to this, and this will serve as a warning call to the Democrats, and to Joe Biden in 2022, this is a drastic, drastic swing in the state of Virginia. It has narrowed up dramatically. While McAuliffe clings on to power for the Democrats in the state of Virginia, they need to be worried about 2022 in the House of Representatives. Although Terry McAuliffe will become the next governor, Joe Biden and the Democrats need to make sure that they have consolidated support so that they do not lose both chambers of the government or not both chambers, but both chambers of the legislative branch uh, come next year. Anyway, that is my prediction for the next who will win the governor race in Virginia. Please let me know in the description what you think will happen um, and who you think you, you will win the election. Um, thank you guys once again so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video, um, and I look forward to making many, many more videos. I will be coming out with a another as I did for my 100 subscriber election special, another um, big video where I do a 2024 election prediction, probably between Joe Biden and Trump, a 2022 Senate prediction, and a 2022 governor prediction. I'm sorry, I'm not as well versed in the governors, but I want to do the whole thing. Um, but anyway, thank you once more so much for watching. Please make sure to go over to my channel and subscribe. I'm so close to, to 200 subscribers this time, actually, a hundred in the 170s. Um, so go over and subscribe. You won't regret it. We have a lot of great content coming out and I can't wait to get to it. Anyway, comment below what you think will happen and like the video. And once more, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later. Have a great day.